it's me, I'm Reverend Sue Lynn Milne of St Peter's Church in Comox. Welcome to our service, our online service this Sunday. And it is Palm Sunday and we are also, as well as having this online service, we're also having our Palm Sunday procession. If you're watching this early enough before Sunday morning, um, you could join us in person down at the marina outside the, um, the Harbour Air Office. We're going to gather there with our palm crosses, um, have part of the service down there, make our way back up to the church for communion. Um, so come along if you can. So that's gathering at 9.30 down at Harbour Air, Comox Marina. So if you're not there and you're only here with me, uh, lovely to be with you here. Uh, we're going to have a, a little bit of a liturgy here and then I'm going to do a quite a short sermon because the in-person service is quite a long one so I've kept it brief um, and then uh, we'll go back to our liturgy and finish there. So let's begin. The stones cry out in joy, the trees wave their branches in delight, the myriad birds burst forth into song in the city and in the countryside. For the Christ comes riding among the people bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, God who chooses to share our life, we worship you. Let's pray. Be known within our life today, O God, who travels with us. Open our hearts to receive you. Open our lips to sing your praises. Open our souls to the depths of your passion for us and for all people. For this is the day when we remember your entry into the city, into the city of those who have gone before us. Be with us as you were with them, O God. Amen. Now we move on to a prayer of confession. God of grace, if we are so busy or so anxious that we do not pause to receive you when you pass through our life, forgive us, O God. If we are so sure that we will recognise you in your coming that we refuse to be open to the way others might see you, forgive us, O God. When we choose to turn our faces away so that we do not see you because it doesn't fit in with our plans, forgive us, O God. If we have lost the joy of discovering your presence and are going about our life as though there are few surprises, forgive us, O God and renew our life with you. Amen. Jesus is always travelling towards us in all our lostness, in all our weakness and failures. This God is never defeated by who we are. Receive the Christ. Receive the grace that is offered. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, humble one, the one who travels towards all that we fear and all that overpowers us. Thanks be to God, who invites our love and moves through the centre of our life in hope and truth. Thanks be to God for the times of hope when the pathway to peace seems to unfold before us. Amen. Now move into our readings. And the first reading is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 118, verses 1 to 2 and 19 to 29. Give thanks for, to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders have rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. 
the Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Here ends the reading. And our other reading, our second reading, is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 29 to 42. As he, Jesus, approached Bethany, Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which has no which, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying the colt, say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud, in, in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring peace. But now it is hidden from your eyes. Here ends the reading. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So, as I think I said at the beginning of the service, I've got quite a brief little sermon for you this week. Um, as, uh, according to the rubrics, it's not necessary to preach on Palm Sunday, but I, I'm going to anyway because we're at the very end of that sermon series that we're looking at stewardship and different ways that the uh, stewardship of our possessions, our money, our time, etc., um, engages with the things around us. So this week we're looking at future engagement. Um, so the reading that you just heard from Luke, the Lord said, go and do this and tell them that the Lord needs it. The Lord needs it. So these crowds lining the street as Jesus said to Jerusalem, crying, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means pray, save us. We're looking for a saviour in their own times. But Jesus, Jesus kept speaking about eternity. Jesus came to fulfill the prophecies of the past. He came to reveal and explain God and God's nature in his own day. And he set in motion a new manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth for the future. In other words, he came not for his time alone, but for the past, his own present and all the future that was yet to come. And we here at St. Peter's are part of that future, nearly 2,000 years away from the event. We're part of that movement which began with Jesus Christ, building on the inheritance of believers who went before us. And it's our responsibility to the next generation to hand on a church that's fit for their future. The evangelist J. John tells a story of a time when he was traveling in a plane next to a woman who, it turned out, was a vice president of a designer clothing company. And she says to him, so what do you do? And he said, well, I work for a global enterprise 
She said, do you? And he said, yes, I do. We've got outlets in nearly every country of the world. We run orphanages, we've got hospitals and hospices. We do debt counselling, marriage guidance counselling. We've got schools and colleges and universities and publishing companies. We look after people from death, from birth to death, and we deal in the area of behavioural alteration. She said, wow. And he said, yes, I know. And she says, what's it called? And he said, it's called the church. But actually, the church do far more than those things that J. John mentioned. We also run food banks. We provide for the homeless and the poor. We have feeding programs for the elderly and the sick. We run childcare programs. We care for the dying and the bereaved. We do many, many more things. It's too many to tell you all about all of them now. I probably wouldn't even be able to cover all of them. But we also proclaim the good news that we have received from on high, that Jesus Christ is Lord and Saviour. And this thing that we call church is what the Lord asks us to invest ourselves in. Seeing, for us, that's seeing St. Peter's into the future. And this is a wise long-term investment. The church isn't some fly-by-night organisation. It's not a temporary presence in the world. Jesus talks about eternity. The Lord needs it. So we use stewardship of our time, our money, our skills, our resources, all that we receive from God to make our church thrive. And the movement set in motion by Jesus all those years ago to, con to continue in this very place. Now we've already gone quite a long way down the path of making our church fit for changing times. COVID has driven us, maybe kicking and screaming for some of us, I don't know, but it's dragged us into this virtual arena, for example. I wouldn't be here talking to you if it wasn't for all of that more than likely. But what else can we do to make our church fit for future? Well, those of you who have already had your pledge form and some of you have returned them, if you haven't, bring them back to the office or mail them in or scan them and send them in electronically. Um, but there's four things on that pledge, pledge form that we can suggest to you or ways that you might engage in, do the future engagement of your stewardship. So the four of these, to nurture those who come after us, this is our young people. These are our older people as well who are newer to faith and also those who are just exploring faith for the first time. Some of the ideas on how you might do this on our pledge form are things like mentoring or forming a prayer partnership between yourself and a young person or if you are one of our young people watching yourself and one of the more, more mature people in our congregation. Secondly, is to be very um, deliberate about forming a culture of welcome, of intentionally building our church family. There are the things that unite us being much greater than those things that could divide us. The third thing is care of our buildings. Now, I know we like to be and we're trying to be more people focused than building focused, but all the same, we need somewhere to be we need somewhere to be a presence. We need somewhere for our light to shine. We need somewhere that we can invite people to. We need a family home. And we need to keep those buildings, our three buildings, in good order. As it is, we are building on the investments of the past. Those people in 1891, when this piece of land was given to the church and the first church building was built, the people in 1939 who built the present building that I'm standing in right now. The people in 2008, not so long ago, that did this, the huge renovation and remodeling and reordering of this church building. We are standing and benefiting on the generous, generosity, their investment in their future, which is our today. And the fourth way is to leave a bequest or a legacy in your will to ensure that St. Peter's can afford and for to exist and to answer the call of God in this place. And the benefits are long lasting. Jesus spoke of eternity. And we do these things because the Lord needs it. 
He needs us, like the generations before us of the past, to invest in the future of his church. Amen. So let's continue with some prayers. God, the stones will cry out in praise of you. There are many roadsides where we have journeyed, many stones that we have trodden. We thank you for the way that you have journeyed with us through the past, and we can be sure that you will journey with us into the present. Even as the stones cry out in love for you, we know that they cry out to you as you pass for those who suffer, for those who struggle in poverty. We cry out for those who suffer in war and in violence. We cry out to you for those who grieve in loss and loneliness or who struggle with illness. We think particularly of those friends and families of um, Vera and Lee who recently passed away from our own church family. We cry out to you for your church in this day, O oh God, as we try to be faithful. We cry out to you that you come and you help us build her and sustain her into the future. And Lord, we cry to you for each one of us, for our own selves, as we long for the day when we will fully share in your abundant life. Hear us as we cry out to you, Jesus Christ, for in you lies healing and hope, all that we need for our life. Amen. Go in joy, for Jesus walks between us, Go in humble faith in all our humanness, for we will be led by the Spirit. And may the whole creation bear witness to its God, the earth be a carpet of green for the carrying of the gospel, and the sun warm in every cold place, as the sacred life of the Spirit dreams its dreams for all creation. Amen. Well, as I said, it was a short, short and sweet this week. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you can't join us in person this week, maybe you can come along next week. Otherwise, it'll be you and me here in the church or somewhere else um, for Easter. Um, also, I would like to tell you, and I think I'd be right in saying that we're going to try and get some of our services live streamed to you. Good Friday. Um, there should be an online uh, Easter sunrise, <laughs> I think, if I can work out the technology, like we did last year, actually. Um, Easter Day, we're also hoping to live stream to you. Uh, we've got some of our parishioners doing a performance at that service, uh, which is really great. I'm really looking forward to that. So try and be with us in person. It'd be great for us to get together um, for the first Easter since I've been here to be in church in person together. But if not, please um, join me here or keep an eye on our website as well so you, you know those details as we, we've got them for you. So be safe, be blessed, and I will see you next time. Bye.